Uh, right. Okay. So, so uh, Nina is a is a pranic healer. She is uh, she is she has completed uh, two levels of certification in pranic healing, and she's currently preparing three levels. Have you've completed your CPH? And the pranic psychotherapy as well recently. Oh, sorry, not CPH. I meant I meant uh, you've completed the pranic psychotherapy also. Oh, I thought you were still doing that. Awesome! Congratulations. So she's completed her associates uh, ACPH, which is associate certified pranic healer. She's completed her CPH, which is certified pranic healer, and she's uncomfortable as she gets when I praise her. And she's completed her pranic psychotherapy. <laughs> So she is uh, she is awesome in, in the in the context of pranic healing. She's also done a lot of studying, and she's also my teacher. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Mina, and take it away. Please educate us a bit on Vesak. Thanks, Sid. Thank you, everyone. It would be lovely to see uh, more videos on. Uh, you know, especially since we come from a world of a lot of stuff is being done uh, nowadays virtually. Uh, but at least I think I'm pretty grateful for this uh, opportunity of being able to connect virtually because uh, it, it does give some interaction, and especially if there are videos on, it's, it's a lot better. I mean, imagine if I was doing this session this way. Uh, you know, <laughs> it just connects better when you can see faces. So if, if uh, possible, do switch on your videos. Um, makes it better. It's okay if you're, you know, not all decked up, if you're sitting in your pajamas, that's absolutely fine. But it'll be just nice for me to see. And that's why, in fact, I don't like webinars very much. I prefer these Zoom sessions, because at least you can see the participants. So good evening and welcome. And uh, let's, like we start all sessions, let's start with a small prayer. Please Take a few deep breaths, close your eyes, put your hands on your heart. And to whoever you pray, whichever God you believe in, just mentally say, Lord God, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for all the blessings that we know that we are receiving. Also for the blessings that we may not be aware of. Thank you for blessing this session and all the participants who will watch it live or maybe the recording later on with your divine guidance, divine help, and divine protection. To all the holy angels, gurus, to all the invisible helpers, to my spiritual teacher, and to all the spiritual teachers, we thank you all for your blessings. Thank you for blessing every participant with a clear understanding of the topic. Thank you, thank you. In full faith, so be it. Take a deep breath. Be aware of your heart, smile. Open your eyes. Welcome to the session. So uh, we've done a session recently on Vesak and there's a lot of, uh, of course, information available online. Uh, I've taken most of the information that I'm going to be sharing with you. It's a very general information. So uh, most of it has been taken from the Lucis Trust. Uh, there's a website, they talk about it uh, from the Alice Bailey books. Uh, anyone who's interested in theosophy will know the name of Alice Bailey. And from the, the understanding of these, uh, this information, the little understanding that I do have comes from uh, my attending various sessions and through my own teacher, Grandmaster Chua Kuksui, who's the founder of Modern Pranic Healing and Arhatic Yoga. Uh, of course, there's a lot more. I will try to keep it simple, not use very big, big terms because that you will anyway find. Uh, but let's just straight away go into what exactly is Vesak? You know, so most of the sessions, we, we try to make them practical, hopefully, and there'll be time for asking questions if anyone has questions later on. But uh, my volume level is highest so if you i hope everyone can hear me please give me a thumbs up if not then may i suggest that you use headphones so uh, i usually speak loud enough <clears throat> so uh, what i can do is try to switch off the ac to remove any background noise all right i hope that's better okay so uh, what exactly is vesak now vesak uh, a lot of people consider it to be a buddhist festival but it's a universal festival. It comes from the word, uh, Sanskrit word, Vaisakha, which 
actually corresponds to the month in which this festival is uh, celebrated. And it coincides with the full moon of Taurus, with uh, Buddh Purnima, and uh, actually it is also called, it's coming to be called the festival of the living Buddha. But uh, like I said, it's not just for the Buddhists, it's a festival which is a universal thing, especially for all the people who are interested in any kind of spiritual knowledge or growth. Okay, so all across the world, various spiritual schools consider this to be one of the most important full moons of the year. Now, uh, it's also the day that coincides with apparently the day that Lord Buddha was born, the day that he attained illumination, and also the day that he left his body and eventually went into, you know, uh, Samadhi or whatever. So it's supposed to be on the same day and all these days are supposed to be the day of Buddha Purnima or Vesa. It uh, actually, let's talk a little bit about why the full moon. Generally, the full moon is supposed to be day, a day of a lot of energy. You know, it's been noted and um, seen that on full moons, and if you've, you've heard of the term lunacy, Luna, it's actually something that is connected with the moon. They say on this day, there's a lot more energy. And therefore, because there's a lot more energy, uh, the moon is considered something that has a power over our emotions. You know, that's why also the word lunatic, for example, is someone who behaves in a irrational manner, right? So on this time, it's been noted and from various uh, studies, it's been seen in hospitals, there are more cases, more babies are born, there are more accidents. People seem to have a lot more emotional turmoil. There are more um, accidents. Uh, anyone who behaves in, uh, you know, who usually is depressed will tend to be even more depressed. So this has been seen across various countries and studies that have been done that around the full moon period, this happens. Now, why does this happen? There's been an explanation that has been given in different schools for this. And the reason is that the energies are very high. Now I come from an energy school and I can see that many of you are also into some kind of energy practice. Um, we know that, and not just you know our school, but many, many schools have started believing that there is an energetic effect. They say there is an effect of the moon on the tides. They say there's an energetic effect also on the physical, emotional, mental, psychological behavior of people, depending on the kind of energy that is coming in. As a school, we believe that, uh, you know, we have a physical body and we also have an energy body. And these two bodies are actually complementary to each other. They are interdependent, they are interpenetrating, and one affects the other. In fact, we don't just have one energy body, we actually have many energy bodies. We have a physical body, an etheric body, an emotional body, a mental body. And then some of you, if you've read up or if you've attended some of the workshops, you know that there's also something called the causal body. And there's uh, an author called Arthur Powell, who's written a book about all these different bodies, the astral body, mental body, causal body. So those of you who are interested in getting to know more, you can you know, read those books. So all these bodies, they get affected by the energy. Another thing that we learn in our school is that whatever is the energy within our body, in the energy world, like attracts like. So most people generally, you know, think about an ordinary person living life. What is their life full of? What is the energy state, the emotional state, the mental and psychological state of a general person day to day? How many people do you know who are really happy? Or how many people do you know who are stressed for one reason or the other? I mean, if you're living in the metro city, especially, uh, all of us know the effect of energy. Each and every city that you go to has a vibe of its own. Every home has a vibe of its own. Now, the kind of vibes that are there, according to the laws of energy, that is the vibe that will get magnified during these full moon times. And out of all the full moon times, 
the three full moons of the year are supposed to be even more important. And these three full moons, actually, it already started about a month ago. The three festivals are the festival of Easter, which happened last month, or the full moon of Aries. The most important one is the festival of Vesa, which is coming up now on the 16th of May. And the third one will be the festival of goodwill coming up in June. I think that is also the 16th of June this year. I may not be right about the date, but more or less around that time. So the festival of Easter is supposed to be the time of awakening of the Christ. No, that's why it is celebrated when Christ arose from the dead. But symbolically, what does it signify? It actually signifies reawakening of humanity or at least beginning of reawakening of humanity. It's a festival of love. It's a festival of giving, right? And then that is a preparation the Christ prepares actually to receive the arrival of the Buddha. Now, in esoteric schools, they actually talk of different initiations. So I won't go into detail, but in, in, in the life of someone who's on the spiritual path, there's supposed to be different, you can say, levels of initiation. The first three levels, for example, are considered to be the levels of discipleship. You know, when you're still kind of in probation, preparing, you are gaining control over your physical etheric bodies, then the astral body, the emotional body, that is, then the mental body. The fourth initiation is what is called the arhatship. You know, when you become an arhat, when you achieve union with the higher soul. The fifth initiation is supposed to be that of a holy master and so on and so forth. Lord Buddha or a Buddha is just a title. If you go into the esoteric studies, uh, the Christ is a title. It's not one person. It's actually like, you know, someone who's taking up an office. So it's a title. And Buddha is also a title. And that corresponds to the eighth initiation. So you've gone through all various other things, gotten full control over your body, your emotions, your mind, achieved oneness with the soul, higher soul, with your higher divine self, and gone beyond that till the eighth level to actually get the title of the Buddha, in which actually you can you know, travel, interplanetary travel and uh, travel also across the universes. So what is special about the Vesak festival is that on this festival, on this particular day, they say that Lord Buddha actually at a cost which is a great sacrifice to him, he actually lowers his vibrations and comes down to a point very near planet Earth. In fact, they say that he comes to a point or a place known as the Vaisak Valley, which is somewhere in the Himalayas. We don't know where it is. They come to the, he comes to the Vaisak Valley for a period of eight minutes. And in that period of eight minutes, he actually showers blessings. These blessings are received by the Christ, then by the other spiritual elders, and there's a whole hierarchy. So there's a whole system. And then they are slowly and slowly distributed to the rest of the earth. And not just on that day, they are actually distributed slowly throughout the year. So though the main event happens in, uh, coin, uh, it coincides with the full moon of Taurus, but the energetic effect continues for the rest of the year. So those energies are taken, anchored and released on every full moon. Okay, so uh, in this valley, and the Buddhists believe a lot of pilgrims go to this valley, they start making their way towards the valley, they gather there, and they say the whole event lasts for maybe about half an hour. I mean, these are the legends, there's no way uh, we can verify it. But according to the legends, they gather there, there is a complete silence just before the main event. Uh, Lord Buddha comes, he gives out the blessings, and then he recedes, and then everybody goes back to their own place in silence. So what I've seen through the various studies that I've done, there's a whole uh, book written by Alice Bailey also on it, pages and pages of information, in fact, but is that there is a lot of focus on silence, on turning inwards at this time. The other thing is that 
uh, spiritually speaking, this festival is supposed to be one of the times where you can actually anchor maximum benefit because the energies are so powerful and so high. If you're able to take the energy, then this is one of the best times for manifestation, for gathering that energy and utilizing that energy for yourself and mainly not just for yourself, for the benefit of others. Now, we are also taught that as you receive, you should give. And as you give, you will receive more. So the job of anyone who would like to uh, take full advantage of this main event is to be prepared in the best possible manner. Okay, so then people will say, what's in it for me? Well, look at it this way. There is this opportunity of a few days, a few weeks to get as much as you can. But if your container is small, you'll only be able to pick up that much. So if you increase your container, if you increase your capacity, you'll be given all of that. The, the amount of energy that comes is limitless. It's there all the times of the year, but at this time, it's like, you know, there is a, a, an extra dosage of energy. Uh, a colleague of mine recently took a session and he explained why at full moon there's more energy. He said, because you're getting the energy not only from the sun, the earth we know gets the energy from the sun, but you're also getting a dosage of energy from the moon. So the moon gets the energy from the sun, the earth gets the energy from the sun, and the moon reflects the energy of the sun back to the earth. So the earth is at that time getting a double dose of energy. At the time of Vesak, there is the added energy that is given apparently directly by the Lord Buddha to be distributed. To be able to distribute this energy, however, according to spiritual sciences, they need what they, they need channels. They need people who can act as channels to anchor that energy and then spread it out. Now, some of you may have heard of the concept of critical mass. Uh, yes or no? There's this whole story and there's this whole experiment that the Japanese scientists had conducted, maybe some of you have heard of it, uh, called the hundredth monkey. Anyone is aware of that? So I'll, I'll quickly share that experiment, but you will, you'll of course get it from Google Baba as well, I'm sure. It, it's called the hundredth monkey experiment in which they say that it, you know, on a certain island, these uh, Japanese scientists noticed that the monkeys were eating sweet potatoes. The younger monkeys somehow learned to wash the sweet potatoes and then eat them. And they realized that uh, the potatoes, when they were washed, they tasted better. Now, as they started doing it, some of the older monkeys also started copying this behavior. And the scientists noticed when the hundredth monkey on that particular island had copied that behavior overnight, literally, there was a change in behavior of all the monkeys in the entire island, but not only the island, also the neighboring islands. So they actually concluded that when the hundredth monkey started following that behavior, somehow there was a change in the monkey consciousness. There was a change in the mass consciousness. So a critical mass was achieved and that suddenly then caused a snowball kind of a movement where all the monkeys learned that behavior. And this is when the monkeys did not have any possibility of interacting with each other island to island. So that's called, you know, in, 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 there's a whole documentary as well. I don't remember the name of the documentary, but maybe you can go and check it. And I think uh, uh, it's a 30 minute documentary on this also, but you, you'll find it. So the idea is that we believe in most of the spiritual schools that if there is a change in just a critical mass in thinking of people, then there will be change across humanity. So we don't even need to reach, we are more than 7 billion people on earth. We don't need to change the thinking of 7 billion people. We need to change the thinking of that critical mass of people. And Vesak is one of the festivals where we are given that opportunity. So the more and more people come together, 
gather together. And you would have noticed, I think, when I started my journey, very few people were interested in spirituality. At least I didn't know many, maybe because I was not in the thing. But comparatively, uh, from then to now, I see a lot more people, younger people come in. Uh, they're interested in knowing, seeking answers as to what's happening in the world. So we already see that shift. And they talk about shifting of eras, et cetera, et cetera. But they say that the moment we reach that critical mass, then there will be actually mass change in thing. And they say that there's the shift that is coming. Uh, you can be an active participant in bringing that shift, or you can be also a hindrance in bringing that shift. Now we have to decide which side we want to be, okay? So uh, it's a very, very important time of the year to contribute towards that shift, to allow ourselves to become channels. And like I said, when we become channels, the benefits are for everyone. It's not just uh, for humanity, but there are obviously benefits also at the individual level. According to my teacher, Grandmaster Chua Kok Sui, he says, when people meditate in large groups, the higher beings are forced to appear. So he said, Every once in a while, you should gather as a community, as a group, and meditate. We also know uh, from some of the people, some of you have attended various workshops, we, every, we all know that our thoughts have energy. The way we think have energy. I mean, there's no rocket science involved in this. We know when we are happy, uh, we feel better. We are more, more full of energy. We are bubbly. We are jumping. We can do a lot of stuff. Uh, and when we are sad, we don't feel like doing anything, right? But imagine if there's a whole lot of people thinking positive thoughts, uh, it will gather momentum. And like we said, in the energy world, like attracts like. So if there are more and more people thinking positive, that will get magnified. On the other hand, if there are more and more people, and generally speaking, we know that there are more people who are stressed than there are happy. Uh, that's why we have so much stress. You can literally at times feel that tension in certain places, right? So our job, if we really uh, want to progress or, I mean, I would say take it as an experiment, try it. Over the years, I've experimented with energy and I've seen that it works. And especially at Vesak, the Vesak festival is called also the full moon, uh, the wish fulfilling full moon meditation. So it's a time where there's a lot of manifestation that happens. The reason that that manifestation happens is there is that energy. To manifest anything, you need energy. You need power. Spirituality also, in a way, is gathering that right kind of spiritual energy. So Master Cho used to say that when people gather together in a group and meditate versus when you are meditating individually, what he said is when seven or more people sit down to meditate together, they pull down the energy of 100 people meditating individually. And then from there on, the number grows exponentially. So if it's seven people, you're bringing down the energy of 100 people. If it is 100 people, you're bringing down the energy of, I don't know how many thousand people. On the day of Vesak, across the globe, at the exact time of the full moon, there are thousands and thousands of people meditating together. So it is an opportunity to actually be part of that group energy and pull down and anchor the energy around you. So when there is so much energy, there are various, various benefits, of course. What are some of the benefits? When you have access to so much energy, there is more power. So there is more purification. I mean, think of a laborer doing work, manually removing the dirt, and think of a bulldozer coming and removing the dirt, which will work faster with lesser effort also, right? So you have access to that energy for greater purification. And if there is greater purification, there are also higher and better chances of you connecting with your higher self. Then because of that excess energy, the chances of having better experiences in the energy world also grows. There's greater intuition, there's greater guidance. Uh, you know, we all talk about having a higher self that guides us at that time if one is able to practice inner silence the connection becomes even stronger and therefore again people have great spiritual experiences 
then, like I said, if you have all that energy, it is easier to manifest your wishes. So Master would always say, um, manifestation requires energy. What is the meaning of manifestation? When you can literally physicalize a thought, you, you want something and that happens. If you read books like The Secret, they all talk about focusing, concentrating energy in a certain part. It's a little bit like, you know, when you see the, the, the condensation that happens, no? the, the moisture evaporates, goes up. When it cools down, becomes a drop. When the drops become heavy, they fall down on earth. So when there's enough energy, if you have thought forms, which gather enough energy, they will tend to manifest. And not only that, what I've also seen is anybody who, you know, you've, you've heard of saints manifesting things just by saying things. How are they able to do that? They're able to do that because they are able to access that amount of energy that is required to physicalize things, to manifest things. So you have that. Then, of course, it's an opportunity to be of great world service. So it's an opportunity to actually play a part and create change in the world. They say change starts by changing ourselves, but when a large group of people start doing the same thing, uh, like I said, like that critical mass of that, that can be reached, then the change will actually become bigger and bigger. Uh, there is a lot of spiritual empowerment. Your bodies get recharged at the physical, emotional, mental level. And this recharging kind of stays with you for the entire year. This event is just once in the year. And just once in the year, if you are able to take advantage of it, uh, it's enough. Literally, it's, you get your mega dose, you get your booster dose once in the year, and then it lasts across the year. So uh, also, if you really want to take advantage of this, you need to prepare yourself. So again, I quote my teacher, he says, you know, purification is necessary in achieving calmness and stillness. Like I said, this whole festival is about silence. It's about stillness to be able to receive, okay? So he would say that purification and uh, preparation for a meditation is as important as the meditation itself. Now, again, that makes a lot of sense. What is the metal that is the best conductor? Anyone? Anyone who's into physics here? Which is the metal which is supposed to be the best conductor? Actually, is it copper? Copper. And copper. Better than copper? Aluminium. Mm -hmm. Gold. Okay. Gold. Gold, gold. 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 Yes. Gold yes. is supposed to be a superconductor. It's very expensive. But if you see some, you get some mobile phones which have these gold inserts in it, no? The gold chip, right? Uh so why? Why is it supposed to be one of the best conductors? Do you know why? If it is pure gold, if there are no impurities in that gold, it's a good conductor. So when you have access to all these energies, you need to be a good conductor. Otherwise, the energy will not pass through you. Okay, will lead pass electricity? No, it's not a conductor. So if our energy body is pure, we can pass through more energy at that time. Also remember, if it is a strong enough wire, it will be able to sustain higher voltages of energy. You can't pass 200 watts of energy through a wire that's just capable of taking 20 watts, it'll burn. So the reason that I was talking and I wanted to do this session, uh, also because a lot of people asked for it, is we must start preparing. We should have already started preparing a month ago, and I hope some of you have already been doing that uh, on the groups we've been talking about it. But if not, you still have almost two weeks, and then there is still time after that. So uh, I would suggest that you practice this for yourself and try and experience it this year. I'm sure after this, I won't really have to talk about it again. Uh, because once you experience the power of Vesak, uh, then nothing needs to be said any further, you know? So how do you prepare yourself? You need to prepare yourself in different ways, physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Let's look at these things, okay? How do you prepare yourself physically? So physical purification starts by keeping your physical body clean. One way of keeping the physical body clean is 
by taking a regular salt bath. So every day from now, if you haven't already been doing it, try to take a salt bath. It's very simple. You can use any salt. Just rub some salt on your body, wet your body, rub some salt on it, and then wash it off and take a normal bath. Salt, according to our teacher, has purifying properties. When you come to the classes, you learn more in detail on how it helps to purify, but start taking a salt bath. Secondly, start exercising. Again, exercise helps to release stuck energies. You see, if you exercise a body part, it becomes flexible. Anything that is not flexible is stiff, is on its way. Master would say, whatever starts becoming stiff is towards, it's going towards death. What happens to the body when you die? It becomes stiff. Now that stiffness is there physically, emotionally, mentally at all, all, all stages, right? So you, you exercise, you exercise a lot. If you exercise, you gain muscle power, no? But not only muscle power, you actually gain energy power as well. So your body becomes capable of handling more energy. It releases old stuck energies. So in these days, more than ever before, exercise, exercise, exercise. Then the third thing that you can do to physical, for physical purification would be to eat the right kind of food. So try and eat what we say, <coughs> excuse me, sattvic food, you know, eat light, uh, actually try and do as much fasting as you can. Uh, Sid does a fantastic program on fasting and I know some of you are aware of that, but actually this is the time when if you fast, you actually help purify the body. Not only that, fasting also helps you develop discipline and control. So it helps you gain mental control as well. But on the physical level, it's very good for detoxifying the body. That's why just before this, you'll see in many religions, there is, have you seen there was Ramzan, then there was, there's Lent, uh, the Jains have their fasting time, etc. So uh, a good idea from now till, till especially two days before, during and two days after the festival of Vesak, try and fast as much as you can. But in the other days, try to eat foods that are fresh, that are rich in prana. So try as much as possible to eat fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, avoid processed foods. If you can, uh, even if you're, if you're non-vegetarian, if you can avoid, completely avoid pork, uh, fish without scales, uh, I would say avoid non-vegetarian for these few days if you can. Eat, keep it light. Let your body uh, expel and cleanse completely. It's a great time to detoxify. So on the physical level, you can take a salt bath daily. You can exercise and you can watch what you're eating uh, quality-wise and also quantity-wise. Like I said, if you can fast, it'll be great. Okay. Then emotionally and mentally. How do you purify yourself emotionally and mentally? By thinking the right thoughts, uh, by being super mindful of what are the thoughts that are coming into your mind every day. Now, this is, again, a cultivated practice. You know, we, we, we hear people talking about mindfulness. What exactly is mindfulness? Being aware. Our, our teacher used to say, without awareness, there can be no transformation. How do you become aware? By really sitting down, by moving inwards and by being aware, okay, what were the thoughts that have been in my mind the entire day? What were the words that I spoke? What were the actions done by me today? So what Master Chua, for example, suggests is at the end of every day, spend about 10 to 15 minutes and reflect so I, I like to use the term reflective awareness. You really reflect and think, how has my day been? And the idea is to always start with something good. So start by recalling all the happy moments in the day. Again, it's something that we have to do. We have to start training our minds to remember the happy moments. The general tendency of an average adult is to remember, of, you know, to recall and uh, remember most of the unpleasant things. Uh, the happier things, it, it takes effort and concentration and a habit to really sit down and remember, okay, 
what was good today? Uh, I mean, how many of us can really go out, smell the flowers and the rain and enjoy it? Or do we take it for granted now? Uh, how many of us tend to complain more than appreciate more? We know all this, but uh, I'm not talking from the theory point of view. How many of us do it practically? Those of us who do it practically, you'll see. Uh, if you've started doing that practice, you'll see that your moods have changed, your energy has changed. We know certain people like that who constantly have higher energy, right? We like those people. How many of us love people who complain constantly? Anyone here who likes people who complain constantly? Also, there's the saying, what you do more and more of, you get better and better at. So, you know, if we tend to complain again and again every day, we get super experts at complaining. Similarly, if we learn to appreciate little, little things, uh, we become experts at appreciating little, little things. So at least in this time, take it up maybe as a challenge, try to, at the end of the day, start counting, really counting what were the happy moments in the day. Then you may come to things that were not so nice, and again, before you look outwards, look inwards. What could I have done better? What could my reaction have been that could have created a different reaction from the other people I was talking to? And then you visualize yourself. Okay, the next time the situation comes, I'll be more mindful. I'll do the right thing. So this is actually a technique to start rewiring your brain. But especially in this time, uh you be more mindful of the kind of thoughts and slowly slowly you'll notice that as you start becoming aware for me it happens oftentimes now in the day it's not that we become saints in one day right so uh, if i find myself complaining somewhere because of this constant practice a bell rings okay stop stop complaining you're complaining again and i normally stop Though sometimes, of course, you know, we are all human. It feels nice, really nice to have that, uh, you know, complain, complain, complain. But there is that awareness and somewhere the warning bell rings in the mind and says, okay, stop complaining. Let me try and see what is good. Let me try and see what is the lesson I need to learn out of the situation or something like that. So at least in the next few days during your preparation, every day without fail, sit down. If you do it once in the day, great. You can do it more than once in the day if you want to and be aware of what are you thinking. The thoughts have to be nice towards yourself and towards others. So don't be a super critique of only yourself or of others. You have to consciously make an effort to appreciate your good uh, qualities. See what you need to change and that. So emotionally and mentally, you start being aware of your thoughts. Also, start watching your words. I would suggest practice silence. When we speak, we lose a lot of energy. Uh, in my case, it's an occupational hazard. I have to talk. But generally, if I'm not teaching, I like to stay quiet. Okay? Conserve energy. Look inwards. Uh, don't, especially uh, the favorite pastime, one favorite pastime for everyone is complaining. The second one is gossiping. At this time, avoid gossip of any kind. Uh, you will be tested. By the way, during the full moon time, the energies are high. The tests are also high. So your patients will be tested. Uh, there will be people who will tend to irritate you more as it is if there's irritation energy in your energy body, that will get magnified. And therefore, you will attract more irritation also. It works like that. If there's peace energy in your body, you will attract more peace. Okay. So try and really see at at this time, am I getting bugged? Am I getting irritated? The third thing you must try and practice to purify emotionally and mentally is the practice of forgiveness. Sit down, make a list of people you need to forgive. You can try and gather them together and just uh, really forgive. You can say, if you understand from the point of view that every interaction comes to teach us something, we, we create our own destiny, right? We are responsible for what we receive in life. 
through what we give in life. So if we are getting something, if someone is hurting us, we have sown the seeds for that. That's what the law of karma is. So you recognize that and you let go. Based on the same law, if we forgive, we are going to be forgiven. So again, during this time, it's a great time to practice forgiveness because you also have that added advantage of energy. So you invoke for help and you forgive. You bless the people who have hurt you and you let go. Uh, it's, it's quite you know, gratifying to be able to do that. So physically, emotionally, mentally. The spiritual part of it is you try and meditate. Those of you who follow any meditation practice, the ones who are in the, spirit, uh, in, in the school of pranic healing, you know we have this fantastic meditation called the meditation on twin hearts. Even if you're not in the school, you have access to the meditation on twin hearts online. Uh, just go to the World Pranic Healing website. Uh, from six o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock in the night, literally there's someone or the other conducting a session in six different languages. It's open to all. Anyone above the age of 16 is welcome to join. I conduct it every Monday and Friday at 7.30 a.m. in the morning. But like I said, uh, there are other groups that I can see people here, they do it you know, at 9 p.m., 10.30. You get all the details on the World Pranic Healing website. It's simply worldpranichealing.com. Uh, you can go there and find it. It's a very nice guided meditation, uh, which actually allows you to uh, open your heart, feel the peace, feel the love, and it purifies, changes the energy at a large level. So practice meditation. What they suggest, all those articles I read about, Vesak, they say at least within 18 hours before the festival of Vesak, participate in a group meditation. Then at the time, actual time of the Vesak, participate in a group meditation. Uh, we will be holding a meditation which will be open to everybody at the exact time of the Vesak. There'll be thousands and thousands of people joining in. The World Pranic Healing Foundation is organizing that. You're welcome to join in. It's going to be open to all, whether you are from the Pranic Healing School or not. Uh, where we will go into that meditation practice exactly at that eight minute gap. And that eight minute gap, we will be uh, practicing absolute stillness. So my suggestion would be, you have about almost, um, we're on the third today, you have about 13 days, start practicing stillness from now on. It'll become easier to tap into that stillness at that right moment, you'll be ready. You know, as I say, uh, if you're prepared well, you will be able to tap into those energies better. Then um, to take full advantage, write down your wish list now. I did mention that this meditation, this, this event is called the wish fulfilling full moon. We actually pray to Lord Buddha Kuan Yin. Lord Buddha Kuan Yin is even see, more senior to the Lord Buddha. Okay. And she's supposed to be the Buddha of mercy and compassion, the Buddha of healing and the wish fulfilling Buddha. Some of you would have heard of her and I will take another hour if I go into talking about Buddha Kuan Yin. But there is this mantra that is dedicated to Lord Buddha Kuan Yin, uh, Om Mani Padme Hum. It's a Buddhist mantra, which is uh, dedicated to her. So in this preparation time, if you don't want to meditate or for some reason you cannot meditate, you could practice chanting the mantra Om or the mantra Om Mani Padme Hum. You can also practice chanting Amin. You can practice chanting Amen. These mantras raise your vibrations. They make it easier to get rid of the chatter in our bodies, in our energy bodies, mental bodies that prevent us from meditating. So when you find it difficult to concentrate or focus on something, just sit down for a few minutes, chant the mantra Om silently. You can listen to it in the voice of a greater guru or you can chant it. The vibrations will help you calm down. It, they will help you also cleanse your uh, energy body and not only your energy body, they also serve to help cleansing the environment around us. So it's a good practice to even play the chants in your home or in the room or in the area that you plan to sit and meditate. 
So you chant these mantras maybe just for a few minutes every day, and then you practice silence for a few minutes. You practice letting go. So that will also prepare you uh, better for, for the Vesak festival. Write down your wishes. A lot of us want a lot of things, but we're not clear of what we want. Uh, oftentimes when I do certain sessions and I ask people, okay, what do you want? Uh, the first thing they will start with, uh, they're not really sure. Be very, very clear because this is the time where you don't want to be wasting energies. The clearer your thoughts, those of you who've done pranic psychotherapy or other this thing, you know, manifestation is also dependent on the clarity of thought. Have very, very clear thoughts. So my suggestion would be start making a few drafts of what you want in your life. Write them down in a short and clear manner. Don't write paragraphs and paragraphs. Be clear and concise. You know, think of an SMS. It only, I think you're allowed only 145 or 150 characters. So your, your every wish should not be more than that. You should be able to express your wish within that short word frame. So be very clear of what you want. Uh, a suggestion could be you define your goals or wishes in certain categories of your life. I would suggest have a financial goal, have a spiritual goal, have a personal goal. What is the level of development you want to do? Uh, and have a professional goal. So you define your goals in what you want. Now there's no limit to wanting what you want. This is the time. If any time you are given, ask how much ever you want to ask, this is the best time of the year to do that. Okay. Uh, by the way, Sid, it's also the best time of the year to do it is also when you have your birthday. So, you know, around the time of your birthday, uh, according to the Kabbalistic cycle, that's the time when you should have your wishes ready as well. A lot of blessings and manifestations come at this time. So it's easier to manifest. Vesak is a great time. So my suggestion would be write down your wishes clearly. When you participate in the meditation, after that, you bless those wishes. And be generous. As you give, you will receive. Bless also the wishes of everyone else. So you wish good for others, good shall come back to you. All right. Uh, lastly, at this time, at least uh, within the Pranic Healing School, I've seen is people tend to keep a bottle of water. I'll take questions in a moment, okay? They keep a bottle of water or rather they keep jars of water and they bless the water as well. Water has memory and we are living in the age of the Aquarius. The Aquarius is the water sign. The water is also, we're also in, uh, according to theosophy, we are also at a time where we are still trying to gain control over our emotional world. And water signifies emotions in the esoteric studies. So it's advisable to keep a nice bottle of water and anchor some of the energies and the blessings in that water after your meditation at Vesa. Then you can use this water, just a sip of water or a you know, little bit of water over the successive months, whenever you need extra energy, whenever you need healing, uh, I did an experiment once, uh, I had a lot of these bottles and I tried using some of this water to water some of my plants and uh, actually they did pretty well. I had a bamboo plant which had almost died. In fact, my gardener had said, it's gone now. I used some of this Vesak water and somehow, magically, it sprouted leaves. So uh, try it. I mean, you know, you experiment for yourself, don't believe blindly experiment for yourself okay so that sort of uh, rounds it up yes another another prayer that you can really use during these times and it is used at the time of Vesak is the prayer given by uh, master dk through alice bailey it's called the great invocation and if you all are wanting to do it we could do it as a group together uh, it's there again available on the internet it's supposed to be a very very powerful prayer uh, and the purpose of the prayer is to align our will with the will of a higher divine self. So it's a prayer that kind of serves to align uh, your will with the will of the greater powers to manifest the divine plan. 
I personally do not know what is the divine plan. I have had that question for the longest time, but there is apparently a divine plan. And uh, when you make yourself a channel, uh, when you chant these prayers, when you do the meditation, when you do the purification, uh, you kind of serve that divine plan. What I have understood is definitely that I have felt the power of Vesak. Uh, the, the energy downpour is unlike any other time for sure. Uh, it's maybe the group energy, whatever you call it, but I've also noticed that initial years of my practice, uh, I was not that great a practitioner, but I would write down my wishes. And a lot of my wishes that I wrote down at the time of Vesa actually manifested. So for me, that is, uh, that is good enough reason to want to continue to do that practice, okay? So uh, we will do the great invocation if you have time, but before that, uh, the, the, I'll open the floor to some questions. Does anyone have any questions? Would you like to add something? Uh, I hope uh, you've gotten a little insight about what is Vesak, what to do to prepare for it. And uh, that's that. So how many times in a day can you chant the mantra Om? Uh, you can chant it for a few minutes in the morning and the evening. Don't over-energize yourself. Just make sure you do a lot of exercise. At any time your body feels heavy, uh, stop. Don't overdo it. Uh, the salt bath you can take before or after. It doesn't matter. Some books say before, some say after. Either ways, it, it doesn't matter. Just use the salt. Uh, but make sure that you don't leave the salt on your body. You make sure that you wash it off. Okay. Rishab, thanks for uh, sharing the online Twin Hearts schedule. And what else? Uh, you can write the wish list. They say normally it is, it's good to, well, according to our teacher, Master Choa, he says, you should say, thank you for, thank you for giving me this, this, this. Or you can write it. I like to write it. Uh, I have, I'm so grateful that I have already received this, this, this. So you can kind of, you know, uh, if you noticed in the beginning and some of you are in the Pranic Healing School, the way that we say, uh, when we say our invocation also is with full faith. So you have to have faith that what you're asking for is happening, but always remember uh, to add a line. I always like to add the line, if this is the best for me. That's like a safety, mechanism you know so what is good for me let it come to me all right so coffee power milti sorry meditation se kafi power milti hai absolutely meditation really helps especially agar aap group pe meditation karenge the group meditations are really really powerful right now we are living through an age where group work is required you know it's not an age of individual work anymore we need to do group work. Yes, we need yes. to work together. We need to finish off uh, differences. There has to be something called oneness. And the Vesak is the time. Buddha, Lord Buddha actually is a representative of discernment, dispassion, disentanglement. So we can use at this time, access his energies to do that. To get yes, coffee knowledge. We didn't know this. We didn't know this. We didn't know this. Uh, thank you very much for sharing that feedback. Uh, there's a question. Just a moment. Let me just go through. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, how would you all like to do the great invocation now? Would you like to go through that? How many would like to do that? We can do it once. So if you close your eyes for a moment and just put your hands on your heart, it's always good to start the great invocation and end it with the mantra Om that adds the effect. So let's just chant three Oms. Take a deep breath. Om. Om. Oh. Oh. 
Put your hands in blessing. Visualize a small earth in front of you. The great invocation. From the point of light, within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the mind of every person, every being. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love, within the heart of God, let love stream forth through the heart of every person, every being. Let love descend on earth. May the world teacher return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the will of every person, every being. The purpose that the holy masters know and serve. Let goodwill and the will to do good descend on earth. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let love, light and power descend on earth, manifest and restore the divine plan on earth. So be it, so be it. So you may visualize golden energies going towards the earth, anchoring themselves in planet earth. May these energies of truth, peace, and harmony be anchored in planet earth. May these energies serve to disintegrate all energies of aggression, all energies of disease, all negative thoughts and emotions. May they serve to spread peace, hope, healing, truth throughout planet Earth. So be it. So be it. So oh. be it. So that is the great invocation. You can find it on the net. You can use this prayer as often as you want. It's a very, very powerful prayer. And it helps to really align the energies better. All right. So uh, it is 8.30. Thank you for joining in. Uh, if there are any more questions, yes, the energized water can be used throughout the year. So oftentimes these group meditations, I've seen people come with jerry canes of water. Uh, some of the healers I know use this water to give it to their patients uh, also, right? Um, can we have the online practice every day? Um, I will think about it and let you know I'm still in the middle of some things. Uh, do we have to go through the levels and reach Buddhahood? I didn't understand the question. Which levels are you talking about, Puja? Can you explain? The uh, levels that you spoke about. Questions? Uh, then yes, you can't go to initiation number eight without having gone through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we all have to go through that and reach that level ultimately? Ultimately, eons and eons of years. But what I do know, again, from the studies in theosophy, the time is running out. As we move, again, I don't want to get too technical, but you've heard that we are right now in the fourth chain. Uh, we are moving towards the fifth chain. Whoever reaches a certain point of evolution will go to the fifth chain. The others will have to wait till the cycle comes back to the fourth chain again to evolve further. And that is one of the reasons they say experts say, not me, and I don't understand it fully, <laughs> that certain species are getting extinct because now they do not have the time to reach the level of evolution required to go to the next chain. Thank you so much. You're welcome. How can the water be saved? You just save it in the fridge. I put it in the fridge in a clean bottle. Uh, how do you save your Ganga Jal? You know, the, when the water is nicely energized with divine energy, it will stay. Right? So I will say thank you to Sid for giving us this platform. Uh, thank you also to all of you. And may you all have a wonderful Vesak. Uh, do prepare yourselves well. This is really a great opportunity for us uh, to benefit from the energies. Uh, it'll be... It'll be nice to know your experiences maybe a month later. And maybe if we have the opportunity, we'll do a session also on the Festival of the Goodwill, which is the next festival, full moon of Gemini. Uh, or it's also called the World Invocation Day, which is the closing part of the trilogy of the most powerful full moons of the year.
Rishabh, you had a hand up. You had a question. Firstly, uh, thank you so much. Atma Namaste. अगर आपने प्राणी की लिंग क्लासेस किए तो आप स्कैन करके देख सकते हैं Uh, the longer o the smaller m equal sound a u um there are different effects so aap energetically thoda bahut experiment karke dekh sakte hain but i really am honestly not an expert on it so i don't consider myself capable of taking a session for that but thank you for the suggestion okay thank you so much all right shall we close thanks for spending the time with me said are you around uh, i'm right here can you hear me Uh no we can't hear you I mean I I know you're saying something but can't make out Now can you hear me Can you be a little louder Now can you hear me I much can't Much better uh, much better Something's wrong with my system I'm using a phone and something went wrong So why don't you please go ahead and close the session up right here All right okay So thank you everyone let's close with a prayer as well please put your hands on your heart smile visualize yourself make why don't we all make a wish uh take a fish and see yourself maybe putting in some of these suggestions into practice see yourself healthier happier if you've never meditated before and you want to meditate visualize yourself trying to meditate again and succeeding at it visualize yourself healthier to the divine supreme being we thank you for your priceless blessings your blessings uh, especially to lord buddha to lord buddha kwan yin we thank you for your priceless blessings your guidance your help your protection to our spiritual teachers all the spiritual teachers all the gurus saints all the invisible helpers to our higher divine selves we thank you all for your priceless blessings to each and every person in this session may each and every person be abundantly blessed thank you for your presence thank you once again thank you to the platform of community healers it's a great platform guys you can find people uh practicing different types of spiritual practices different schools uh, uh so do look up the page on facebook it's called community healers and um you know you can you can follow that page and follow all the sessions they normally do all the sessions on saturday unfortunately for me i'm never free on a saturday so i had to ask sit permission to do the session on a, a weekday thank you for taking out time on a weekday and by the way eid mubarak and also eid happy mubarak. birthday hum to mubarak abayenge ah uh, well you we'll, you'll get to know all right so thank you everyone have a great evening Bye. see you next thank time you, Bye. thanks so much thank you so much Happy thank thank you. you for the wonderful session, Nina. Wonderful thank session. Thanks. Thank you, Nina. Ji, thank you. Thank you so much.